Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Good Kiss. How are you all doing at home? I am doing good and that is why I'm back with another tutorial which will be on how to make a lovely bouncy flounce which can be added to any outfit at all. You see these flounce or ruffles can be added to any part of your outfit because your outfit must have been all made before attaching it. For instance, you can add start from either the waist to the shoulder, from the waist or to the waist at the back or before the waist at the back. You can add it either from the waist or the underbust area going over your ham region and stopping at the end of the sleeve or you could just run, run it through to the waist at the back. It depends on your preference. You could either add it even from the shoulder all across the bow straight to the hip area and it can be attached to dresses, blouse, skirts, yes, any part of your outfit, these ruffles can be added. Then there are times you see some flounce looking so bouncy and beautiful. That is because the horse hair braid is being added. Yeah, or crinoline as it's popularly called. Not because it's being added, I'm going to show you how to have it. But in case you don't have this, you don't have to worry. All you have to, because we still had some fabric to whatever measurement we are making use of, so that by the time we pleat it, oh my god, it's going to be half of this one. Then with the horse hair braid, wow, <laughs> it's going to be so beautiful. So for instance, now I can just decide to start from somewhere. Let's say from the under the bust, lower than the uh, under bust here, somewhere here, and we can just run it through to the the same point at the back. Yes, we can do that. Or from the waist through to the waist at the back. It depends on your preference. So we can even finish making it and decide to just start from here and run it through the sleeve. Yes, but I'm going to show you. So let's say I want to start from here. So the same point at the back, okay, that's 26 inches. So that means we'll be working with 26. We are still gonna have some measurement to eat because we're gonna pleat it to give it that bouncy effect. So, and then, and all, any type of fabric can be used for these ruffles or flounce. Yes, your African print fabric, lace, satin, crepe, any type of fabric at all can be used for this purpose here. So now before we go to the work table, follow me on Instagram, the key signatures and on Facebook, so in innovation. Check out my other YouTube channel, Pattern Drafter with Blue Keys and Blue Keys Signatures. And if today is your first time of checking out my channel, you're welcome and I really love you from the depth of my heart. Don't forget to subscribe. Now to the work table to make some bouncy flowers. <laughs> Making use of this fabric to make the flowers. Here I have the also braid of three inches in wideness. You can get a smaller one than that. So can you see three inches? So let's set that aside. Now we need to determine the wideness of the flounce we are working with. So I'll be making it with six inches. So you can even make five, between five to eight is okay. But for me, I'll make it six. So we seam allowance six and a half. Having done that now, we need to determine the radius because we'll be cutting like we cut for a full circle. So for that, radius we need the length of the flowers remember when i measured i'll be working with 26 26 inches so if you have much fabric you can just double this measurement trust me because when you pleat it it's going to be so full and bouncy but if you don't have much fabric you could have between 10 to 12 minimum of 10 to 12. so for me i'll just add extra 14 inches to this to make it 40 inches so you can see that's quite much to be able to pleat it around so now that's 40. Now let's determine the radius. So here that's 40 inches. That will be 40 inches divided by 6.28, which gave me 6.3. Now we need to have that 6.3 or approximately 6.4 to the six and a half inches um, wideness of the flounce. So that's point plus. 6.5 because half is 0.5 three quarter is 0.75 so that gives me 12.86 so that's approximately 12.7 so i will fold a fabric of 12.7 so here i have about 14 so it's more than enough i just need 12.7 so after folding it on this way then i'll have to fold 
again. So why folding? I'll confirm the twelve point seven. I still need to fold a little. So now we can post it. So that's how you fold for a full circle. So first the radius which is approximately six point four. I'll mark that. Just keep rotating it this way. Even if you make it 6.5, it is okay because we are going to be pleating. So, in this case, you don't need to be exact. So, don't stress yourself at all in this case. You need to be exact. So the next thing is the six and a half inches, which we calculated to be twelve point seven. Okay. So looking at this length, can you see we have the six and a half? So that's perfect. So can you see the way I folded now? You are going to fold the same way to cut another one after this. So we are using this, this fabric for both the lining and the main fabric. So you can either mix it up, for instance, if you are using an uh, African print fabric, use um, a lining that blends for the lining. So you can mix two fabric together. It's not compulsory, you use the same fabric for both the main and the lining. So this is what I'm going to have. As you can see, but before I open it up, I'm going to fold it back and cut the exact same thing. I cut out the other one. So this is what I have. So I'm just going to slit just one part here. Then this. Okay. Good. Looks like. Let me see. So the fabric I'm working is very light. Certain ease thicker than this but that's not something to worry about what i'm going to do now to start sewing it up is to get us a braid make sure right side are facing each other you'll be sewing on the wrong side then get the also braid so when you want to start sewing what i do is to bring the us a braid out more so after sewing it all around then i'll trim it off because what we are working with is not straight it's circular so just do that Take to the sewing machine and start sewing half an inch all around, just following the curve. You don't have to pull the horsehair braid at all. So from the beginning to the end. Horsehair braid all around. So this was the starting point. So that was the reason why I told you. So now I'll just follow the fabric. Okay. So the next thing you are going to do is to notch this all around. I'm going to notch it, can you see that, all around. And there are two ways in which you can just turn this around. First, open it up this way. Now this is the right side. You will now have to push all the similar ones towards the crinoline. Can you see that? They will now have to sew very close to the hem cut out an inch all through so that turning it over will be very easy after doing that then you can now close 
each ends one to the other part but for me for my peplum and all that what i do at times is this after notching it all through good the next thing i will do is to go into the sewing machine close this end half an inch go to the other one to close it half an inch so after doing that i'm just going to bring everything out on the right side this way just listen attentively then i'm just going to take my time to pin this down while you're on the sewing machine you don't need to do this so you just use your fingers to adjust can you see but if you are using this method make sure you are using a matching tray that is very very important this is faster but make sure you are using a what a matching tray can you see that so i'll take go back to the sewing machine now make sure the same is on the middle the edge of the crinoline can you see this is the right side this must have been closed from the inside then i'm just going to go to the sewing machine and sew in quarter of an inch this way all to the end but make sure you are using a matching tray i top stitch the flounce as you can see that so i made use of black color so that you can see what i did so if you make use of a matching tray you won't see it at all so the next thing we are going to do is this you will use your overlocking machine or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine to just sew this off from the beginning to the end so then we can now start pleating it so looking at this now i'm sure you will understand what i meant by if you have enough fabric so you just had to the measurement can you see the pleating will bring out a lot of beauty that is what will bring out that fullness and the bouncy effect i've just shown the raw edges all around another option which i do at times is this remember we have 40 inches now but we actually needed a length of 26 so at times i would have just splitted it randomly to attain that 26 before placing it on the fabric at all so i would have you know pleated it and sew it randomly but let's go to the wool mannequin so that we can just walk around there just split the flounce on the mannequin or any outfit you're actually working on yes so we are assuming the outfit is on the mannequin now and there are two ways whereby you can attach this flounce to your outfit one when you have trimmings all these beautiful trimmings that are store bought you can get them in the store when you have that there's a way you sew it on the outfit and if you don't have any trimmings and you are just attaching the, just the flounce there's a way you also attach to your outfit i'm going to explain the two and then another thing is this fabric i'm working with is a lining fabric so it is very very light and not stable at all so just imagine me using a brighter satin or african print fabric is just gonna be so but let's just work with this because we are having a tutorial the most important thing is for you to understand what i'm doing so what i'm going to do now is just start from wherever you want the uh the flowers to start so this is just below the on the bust area so let me just pin it down so this method now is for if you have trimmings so in that case you'll be placing your trimmings on it so all you have to do is make sure these raw edges are towards the outside that is if you have trimmings and then you just start splitting all around okay. so start pleating it so i like to pleat it before even placing it on my outfit or dress or blouse whatsoever Good. So that is how I'm just going to pin. So by the time you sew it down, it just stays. You can see it's bouncy. I'm just tap that down here. So that's how you keep pleating it. So the more fabric you have, the more pleating you are going to have. And the more pleating, the more bouncy and fuller it's going to look. You just keep pleating it. So imagine 
all these 40 inches is just from the waist to the shoulder. You, you can imagine it's going to be so bouncy. So, just keep pleating the shoulder area. You can just leave that and then let's move to the back. So this is what I have at the back. Can you see that? So this is what it looks like. So well now, after sewing it all through that way, you now have to get your beautiful trimmings and your glue gone, and then you start fixing it all to cover the raw edges. Can you see that? So that is how you're going to cover up the edges with your trimmings. So let's go for the second option. And then for those that just want to have it over the sleeve, over your sleeve, in that case, you won't go through the back. So that means you are just going to go through this in this way. So now let's go for the second option. I want the second option whereby they don't have any trimmings and they just want to attach their flounce. All you have to do now is you have to place it this way. The raw edges will have to be inside. So I want this to start from here. So tuck that from me down. Good. Then you start pleating. You just hold this up for some minutes. And you keep. So imagine if we have more fabric. So it's just going to be so full. Can you see that? Imagine there's more fabric, it's going to be very, very full. So that depends on your preference. So if you want it over the sleeve, you place it this way. Can you see? So from here, the raw edges is inside. You're just going to sew it to your fabric all through to the back or wherever you want it to stop. If you want it at the shoulder, so you sew it up to that point. After doing that, the next thing you are going to do now is this. You have to flip over. Can you see? After sewing it all, you have to flip over. So after flipping over, you have a very neat finishing. Then you will now have to top stitch. Stitch, it makes the flounce sit back. Not so it's, it's still going to be bouncy, but it's going to make it sit back. That is why the top stitching is very important. Can you see that even without stitching, this is what you're going to have? So, for those that don't have any trimmings, this is how you go about your flounce, and you can see so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Can you see that? Isn't that lovely? So after doing that, there are some little, little tackings you might need to make just to make it sit so well again. So just with your needle and thread, you can do all that like this. You just, you know, take it down. So, but if you top stitch, it's just going to be beautiful. So with a little tacking I did now, but that's going to be below with your needle and thread, can you see how well it stood? So that is not moving, but it still have that bouncy effect. So that is the beauty of all this. So with the top stitching, you're good to go. I really love this. <laughs> so can you see this? This is just, yeah. So can you see that? So that is how to attach your flounce. Can you see how it looks so bouncy? So imagine you use a stable fabric, it's just gonna be wonderful. So this also can be tacked down also to the back. So by the time you, this has to be removed now because it's coming all this way. So that is how you attach your flounce to your outfit. So if my tutorial on how to make this has been really, really helpful, please give me a giant thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I remain your girl, Bella Kiss. Bye, guys.